NFL has always been a male-dominated industry. Well, as they say, times have changed and today we will witness the first black woman to take over the throne. Hey guys and welcome back to The Opulence. In today's video, we are going to talk about Melody Hobson, one of the most powerful women executives in the country and the first black female owner in NFL history. But before we begin with today's topic, make sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wait. Melody Hobson is an American investor, businesswoman, and financial educator who was born into poverty and has made it her mission to escape, succeed, and help others better manage their money. Hobson is the co-CEO of Ariel Investments, a Chicago-based investment management firm. She serves on the boards of several large corporations and organizations, appears frequently in the media, and is widely regarded as one of the world's most influential people. Hobson was born in Chicago on April 3, 1969. Her mother was a single mother with five other children who struggled to make ends meet, according to Hobson. Hobson told Harper's Bazaar that her mother made really bad financial decisions that resulted in them being evicted or losing power or phone service. These experiences, she claims, made her obsessive about money management, a passion that led her to pursue a career in finance. Hobson's difficulties at home encouraged her to value school and education. She has previously stated that she would cry if she couldn't go to school. Hobson eventually made it to the promised land, an Ivy League university, thanks to this hard work and good grades. She studied international relations and public policy at Princeton and apparently spent a lot of time at the library. She also interned and worked at several investment firms. Hobson attributes her success to her upbringing, claiming that a childhood of financial hardship taught her the value and power of money. After graduating in 1991, Hobson went to work for Ariel Investments, which was founded by fellow Princeton alums John W. Rogers Jr. as the Director of Client Services and Marketing. She quickly rose through the ranks, eventually becoming president in 2000 and co-CEO in 2019. Hobson was drawn to Ariel, a Chicago-based firm that manages the assets of individual and institutional investors throughout its own mutual funds and separately managed accounts. Because its founder, Rogers, was a wonder kind, and it was the country's first black-owned money management firm. She found a mentor and the ideal platform in Rogers to achieve the financial freedom she desired. Hobson, who grew up moving from apartment to apartment and was frequently evicted, told Vanity Fair that she was desperate to understand money. She said, I felt like financial security would be the biggest gift I could ever have, ever. Since then, Hobson has established herself as a financial literacy expert, hosting an ABC show about money management during the financial crisis. Hobson is a strong supporter of financial education and literacy. She has taught courses, spoken at events, and worked in the media to share her knowledge with readers and viewers of ABC's Good Morning America, CBS News, Black Enterprise, and other publications over the years. Her articles and videos educate millions of Americans about finance while elevating her to the ranks of the industry's most powerful figures. Hobson also applies her knowledge in the boardrooms of some of America's largest corporations. She was named Starbucks Chairwoman in 2021. She also serves on the board of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, and has previously served on the boards of several other major corporations, including DreamWorks and Estee Lauder. Hobson has also served on the boards of several civic, nonprofit, and professional organizations over the years. The Economic Club of Chicago, the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, and the George Lucas Education Foundation are among them. Ariel's founder, John Rogers, named Hobson president of the company in 2000. Meanwhile, she founded a philanthropic organization, a public school on Chicago's South Side, and began working to increase corporate diversity by hosting a conference for black corporate directors. In 2019, Hobson was named Ariel's co-founder. She'd already served on the boards of Estee Lauder. DreamWorks Animation, Groupon, and Starbucks by this point. She was appointed chair of Starbucks board in 2020, making her one of the most visible black board chairs in the United States. In 2019, Hobson received Princeton's highest and undergraduate honor, the Woodrow Wilson Award. A year later, the university named a new residential college after her, the first to be named after a black woman. Hobson met Star Wars creator George Lucas in 2005, and they married eight years later at Lucas Skywalker Ranch. 
Hobson told Vanity Fair, We have the same values. By values, I mean that what's right and what society expects of us. The couple held their star-studded wedding and lavish reception at Promontory Point in Chicago. According to Vanity Fair, Steven Spielberg, Oprah Winfrey, Samuel L. Jackson, Harrison Ford, and Robin Williams all helped celebrate their marriage. Prince even performed at the party in Chicago. Hobson said in 2016, When George and I got married and we planned our wedding reception, we reached out to ask him if he'd be willing to play. She then added, and much to our shock and sheer delight, he said yes. About two months after their wedding, the couple welcomed a daughter via surrogate, Everest Hobson Lucas. And just in June, a group led by Walmart heir Rob Walton agreed to pay $4.65 billion for the Denver Broncos. Walton will become the team's new controlling owner, but his son-in-law, Greg Penner, and Walton's daughter, Carrie Penner, will be in charge of the day-to-day -day operations. The Walton Penner Group has also reached out to Peyton Manning about possibly joining the team as an advisor. Another significant development in the team's ownership has gone unnoticed. Ariel Investments co-CEO Melody Hobson has already been announced as a minority owner joining the Walton Penner Group. Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson spoke with Hobson on June 13th, and he came away impressed. Wilson said after a minicamp practice, What a tremendous accomplishment and what a gift to be able to do what she's going to do. While other black women including Venus and Serena Williams have held limited stakes in NFL franchises, Hobson is the first to be identified as being a part of an original ownership group buying a team. The Athletic reports. He then added, She's the first black woman to do this. That is a big deal. This is history. I think it's gone over people's heads a little bit. It's news. It's a tremendous representation for minorities. But black people in particular. He then continued by saying, I think the growth within the NFL and what they are trying to do, the Waltons too. To do that and honor that is pretty awesome. I think that relationship is really important, and we want to do everything we can to win. That dialogue is everything. That's what helps win. Hobson, who was born in Chicago, is active in her community, particularly in education. She has previously served as chair of After School Matters, a nonprofit that provides high quality after school programs to Chicago teens, and as director of the Chicago Public Education Fund, which is charged with ensuring that every child in Chicago has access to world class public education. Melody Hobson is an example of an American success story. She was raised in an environment where the odds were stacked against her, but she rose to become one of the country's most recognized and influential voices a few decades later. Hobson has accomplished a lot in a short amount of time, and perhaps most importantly, she has used her growing influence and status to help others who are less fortunate. Her efforts to improve financial literacy, expand educational opportunities, and promote diversity have improved America. You can't get much better than that in terms of accomplishments. What do you think of Melody's success in life and her ownership in NFL history? Make sure to let us know in the comment section down below. That's it for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on any future content we'll produce for you guys. We're signing off now, but we'll be sure to catch you all in the next one.